have returned. Uh, I'm Greg. I'm Chris. And we are in Egan, Minnesota, which is where we do all of our manufacturing and our distribution point. And um, if you've seen one of our videos before, you know that already. Uh, but we wanted to do a video on Rhino Color, which we actually have a few out. Mm -hmm. But I thought this was kind of interesting because we're actually going to be doing it on polyester this time. Correct. Um, which is a little bit different animal than what a lot of people are accustomed to. Yeah, so. most people are going to be doing a standard uh, cotton or maybe poly shirt, but we're actually going to do a polyester bag today. Yeah, so um, Rhino Color. Rhino Color comes in a wide, wide range of colors. Um, 20 is to be exact. From yellow, black, yellow, blue, purple, metallic blue, and gold and silver, yep. and everything like that. Also 11 by 17 and 8.5 by 11. But um, why don't we yeah. get started? So what we're going to do is we're doing a yellow design. It's got a little sun print on here. So um, you know, with this print, mirroring it is not really that big of a deal because obviously if I have it one way or the other way it doesn't really matter. But if you were to have wording or any other kind of a design, yep. you're definitely going to have to mirror it because when the, once this gets put onto your item, whether it's a bag or a shirt, it's going to be upside down. So you're going to want it opposite when you print it. Yep. Wrong reading. Yep. Exactly. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our colored sheet is what we print onto and then we're going to marry the B sheet to it. So there's a coating on the B sheet and then there's a pattern on the back. That's the back. Yeah. So you don't want that in contact with your toner. So we're so, going to be so doing... Like, just a quick question though. Okay. Um, what did you print that with? What printer did you use? Oh, this? this printer I used the, uh, the Oki 831TS for this. So just a standard color or CMYK printer. Mm -hmm. um, but um, you know, using the Okies is going to give you a better result because they have a better washability yeah. factor with their yeah. toners compared to an HP or Samsung. And um, I also like printing in 100% black, or a composite black, I should say. So using all four toners to actually print the black because you're going to get a nice heavy coverage on there and it's going to help with the transferability. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to be pressing this at 290 degrees for 120 seconds with a medium to heavy pressure. So I'm always going to have my image sheet down first. And what I also like to do sometimes, you don't have to do it, but I get in the habit of actually putting parchment paper down in case I have flipped a sheet the wrong way, which I've done before when I'm in a hurry and I'm just going and going and going and I'll, all of a sudden I have the design stuck to my heating platen or it's stuck to the bed where there's a nice white ring on there. So I just get in the habit of doing this. Yeah. And with this paper, I should mention, I do like to preheat the bed of the press, or the, the, yeah, the bed of the press. So I'll bring this down for about 15, 20 seconds on my very first print so that the bed's nice and hot. Now, if you're going to do them over and over and over, obviously you only have to do the first right, one. Right, right, okay. So. so remember, image sheet down first. Sometimes I like to fold the corner so that makes it easier to peel that B sheet off. Line that up, just make sure it's covering your design. Also put another one on top to make sure that I'm not covering anything. And we'll go ahead and close this press. And that's for 120 seconds? 120 seconds, so 290 degrees. Right, and that's a medium to heavy? Correct, yeah, okay. medium to heavy pressure. Now obviously I'm a little bit bigger guy, so you know my medium to heavy might be a little bit less than if you were a little bit smaller person, but you'll know your press. You know, I'm not going off of a digital gauge, I'm just going off a of feel. Right. And once you have your press, you'll kind of get an idea of what's a medium yeah. to heavy. And we're actually using the uh, Geo Knight um, DK20S, which is a swing away, obviously, you can see that. Um, but it also has um, digital timer, mm -hmm. uh, digital temperature. Your adjustment right here is for up and down, so that's adjusting your pressure. Um, and it actually does come with a pressure setting, but I've done this so many times, I don't myself use those. I just go off a of feel because mm -hmm. once you get to know your heat press, you know, you don't need to use that digital readout right. unless you really want to. But right, right. It does come with it. Yeah, and, and we think it's really important to have a, a, a good heat press, I mean a high quality heat press, particularly when you're doing a two paper system because you have to make sure that that bed and that that the hot the platen is, is actually is milled correctly. It's got to yeah. be perfectly flat. Otherwise, you're going to have pockets where then it's not going to have even pressure. Yeah. 
So here's a case, then we take a old t-shirt or part of a t-shirt, rub it up a little bit, and the reason for that is just in case there was a little air bubble in there, we can get them back together. You want to do a hot peel, peel it back upon itself, and peel slow. Yeah, you don't want to be going like this when you're peeling. Yeah, if you peel straight up, you're going to lose part of your design. Yeah. But as you see, we have the whole coating of the paper transferred over. Used and to now be this black. Used now to be black. Gray. Now it's kind of a gray because we've got the coating of that paper on yeah. here. So now what we're going to do is we're going to trim this up because sometimes that B sheet will press into this edge. So I'll let Greg here mm -hmm. trim that up for me. And now I'm going to get this bag set. Now you can see this bag. We've already done one design. We're just going to put a design on the back of this bag. You can see these, uh, you know, the strings on here that when we put this on here, it may cause problem with the pressure because if you have these, like these knots on the bed, you're going to have to either account for that, which is going to be very difficult when they're this big. So you may have to put something inside of it. But if you can get away with not having this on the bed, that's going to be your best option. So like on this one, normally I would press an item going this way. But with this one, it's actually going to work out well if I take these handles, put them underneath the platen, then I can actually have these knots on the outside. So when I'm pressing, I'm pressing flat and I'm not pressing on top of this knot. Mm -hmm. So obviously I have that upside down. We don't want to press on that side again. So let's flip this over correctly. Put some parchment paper down because I have that other design down there. So now we're going to take our image here. Now remember, now I have to remember I put this the opposite way. So make sure you don't go this way because you have the garment this way or whatever. But so just place this down. Make sure that coated side or printed side is down on your item. And then we're going to press that for 30 seconds. Once again, I get in the habit of putting this over the top. Make sure I don't have any mistakes. Yeah, so the temperature is the same as it was the first time around when we married the two, two pieces of paper at 290. So we don't have to wait for this adjustment. Correct. Yeah, there's really some papers nice. out there where you're at a lower temperature, then you've got to raise up your heat to another temperature just to go to the substrate. Right. So, um, and again, this is, comes in an 8 and by 11, 11, 17, 20 different colors. You can find that right on our website under laser paper section. And um, it has a graph there so you can see all the different colors. It's yep. pretty amazing, actually. Mm -hmm. And now this is going to be a cold peel. So we're just going to take this off the bed and let this sit for about two or three minutes. So usually in that time, if we're doing some uh, multiple items, we'll just keep going with those items, let them sit. This can sit all day long, can sit a week, it doesn't matter before you peel it. Just make sure you allow it to cool down before right. you peel it. Right. So we're going to wait a couple of minutes and then uh, we'll be right So back. Yep. we're back, it's cool, yep. and uh, he's going to All right, so we're peel. going to peel this off. So when I'm peeling it, make sure you don't peel straight up. Possibly could take the image off the bag. So we're going to peel this back upon itself. So I curl this. And what I like to do is actually just roll it back. And just like that, we have nothing left there. And we have a nice design there.